Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. Now before we get started, I know a lot of videos start like this, but the reason I've been posting recently is because it is a very intense time in esports. I want to make worlds. I'm close to worlds. I haven't made worlds before. I really, really want to make it and I've been focusing a lot on that. On top of that, a lot of, you know, just my IRL friends, my IRL homies, they're, you know, leaving off to school soon. It's the end of summer, so... I've been hanging out with them on top of that, so I haven't had too much time for content creation, but I'm going to be back on the grind this week and definitely the week following the finals. The finals is a week today. It's currently Sunday for me, but I have a nice, very, very nice video for you guys. It's going to be us versus IX Gaming in the qualifiers. Whoever wins gets a qualifying spot in the top five of the NA bracket, so it's a pretty important game. You know, it's very important specifically because us and ix is the rivalry for the number two spot because tribe apparently mathematically is already qualified so it's going to be a big game um with that being said though we do have a sponsor for this video so i'm going to show you guys the sponsor real quick so before we get into the games that you guys definitely want to see let's hop into it and let's show you guys what we got today legend dino has just been released globally august 23rd so you can be one of the freshest players to get on this game legend dino already supports 13 different languages such as english and french so players globally from all around the world will be able to enjoy this game just like everything on the channel legend dino is a real time game so you are facing people from all around the world in real time there are many different things in legend dino that determine the outcome of a battle each dinosaur has different skills on top of that you can also decide how aggressive or how defensive you want them to act and on top of that there's also special skills which all of this together is going to determine the outcome of the battle there is no counting yourself out in legend dino you can turn the table in the most insane and unprobable ways this is why the game is so fun. There is literally always a chance that you can win every game. Five attributes capable of collecting and nurturing a hundred different species of dinosaurs in this game. There are more than 100 different species of dinosaurs in the game. And on top of that, they can all evolve to three different levels. Each time they evolve, their appearance transforms and becomes a little bit better and a little bit more epic than it was. When you create your account, you get 50,000 gold, 1,000 gemstone, 100 dino food. And if you use the coupon code on your screen right now, you will also get an additional 300 gemstones to start off your game. Now, this offer is not going to last very long. With the 1,000 gemstones that you get at the start of the game, you can summon dinos for up to four times and get a team of four star dinos. Now, the maximum amount of stars is five. So this is obviously going to give you a really good team to start off with, but this offer is not going to last forever. I don't know exactly how long, but you have to get the game soon if you want this offer, and it's definitely going to make your life a lot easier. There are a lot of events that also happen inside the game. There are attendance events, so you just have to check in once every single day, and after only seven days, which is not that much time, you get a free five-star dinosaur, so a high-powered dinosaur to start off your game. There are also events for reaching certain levels, so for example, if you get a dinosaur to level 50, you get another 1,000 gemstones, so you are just pouring yourselves in with gemstones at this point you're going to be fully loaded and then on top of that additional compensation will be given every single time you clear an area this game is honestly really good i think a lot of you guys would enjoy this it's one of the better ones that i have covered on my channel so if you guys want to check it out the link is going to be in the description below but with that being said let's get back to the video so going to the first game here i forgot exactly what was banned i know mortis was banned i know sprout was banned i know brock was banned and i believe the fourth one was Stu. so we're going to be going with a gene sandy and Tick comp. The reason we go with this comp is because Charles, um, aka the GOAT, is one of the best buzz players in NA, if not in the game. The only reason I say the game, and I'm very careful when I say these things because there's a lot of regions with a lot of really good players, is because NA is definitely the most popular region for buzz. A lot of the world doesn't really play buzz too much or just bans it out. And Charles is one of, if not the best, buzz in NA. And I guess that would mean the world but with that being said the comps here sandy gene to counter the buzz and then tick lane just because tick is so strong on this map we get backed up tuny gets marked and this game honestly it's just really slow a lot of these games are really slow because it's very high level gameplay so we're gonna kind of you know just skip through things as the game goes on just to make the video a little bit faster so it's a little bit less boring for you guys but what you guys are going to be seeing here is basically the same thing 30 seconds has gone by we're just trying to get gene pull we're trying to get sandy super we're trying to get any form or any way any type of positioning 
to move up the map. Right here, I'm one shot off of Gene Pole. I'm finally able to get it over there. They have some decent position also over here on the right side, so maybe we can try and make a play. OG puts down his tick head. Toonie's going aggressive, and this is where we try and make a play. The unfortunate part here is that Toonie is marked, so there isn't really that much he can do. He isn't going to go down. In fact, no one is going to go down. We almost get Cheppo. Maybe two or two more seconds, I'd say, and we get the kill. But this is going to be a zero kill game, and we're going to lose the first game one to nothing going down the first set. So going to the second game here, we lost one nothing. We lost control pretty quickly because they had a Rosa. They just walked into the grass. You know, they defeated us pretty easily. So we're going to go with a different strategy. We're going to go with no thrower. Instead, we're going to be going Sandy, Bell, and Buzz. We get a pretty quick kill over there on the Sandy. Oh, just going to pick up the blue star. And Buzz does have position and getting super. So it's a really good start to our game so far. I'm going to almost take down second over here. We're going to leave him at one shot. I probably should have pushed forward over there, but I didn't want to overextend. Um, and I kind of it's not really a waste of a sandy super, but we didn't really gain anything out of it So I'll chalk it up as a waste of a sandy super but right here three nothing I'm just gonna skip again 30 seconds forward as literally nothing happens It's just people and brawlers, you know standing shooting trying to poke out Toonie's going to try and make a play The reason he's gonna try and make a play is because he can die it doesn't really matter if he dies We still have the lead we still have the blue star whatever it doesn't really change anything But we're backed up really far and we don't like being in this position whatsoever so unfortunately og gets a little bit too close to toonie there toonie's getting a little bit low in hp toonie tries to get cheppo he's able to do so and he almost actually gets a second kill there on charles that was really unfortunate i didn't realize how close he was to the second kill there but 20 seconds left we're in a pretty good spot but i'm starting to get pinched og starting to get pinched toonie just supered a wall um and now we're starting to get backed up so again toonie can die Tuni does get intercepted over there on a super it's currently 5-5 five, five, so we can't have any deaths or we lose OG gets hit. He's going to get hit one more time, and we are going to go down. I'm just going to shoot my teammates in a little non-toxic way because YOLO, why not? And that's a really quick 2-0 for IX, and they're going to take the set lead 1-0. Now, most competitive games are best of 5, but qualifiers are only a best of 3 because it is just qualifiers. So, being down 1-0 is a pretty big L. We have to win two straight sets. If we lose a set, we're done. So, let's hop into the next map. And show you guys what it is so going to this first gem game here i'm going to be hopping on the gene we have toonie on the crow and og on the bell this comp was really easy to come up with um gene is a really good mid even though it did get nerfed so it's not as good as it was before it's definitely something i'm comfortable with obviously you guys know i play a lot of gene and then og on the bell he's also super comfortable on the bell and then the crow just to kind of tie things together is really nice crow doesn't get countered by a lot it has the slows it's a really good brawler and Toonie's been playing a, a fair amount of Crow um, just like throughout the year. Crow's a brawler that's been really strong. It's just been a really nice piece on top of, you know, the main two brawlers in your comp. Kind of just throw out a Crow in there to tie it all together. And Toonie's been, you know, kind of nailing the Crow all season when it comes to BSC. So he's going to stay on the Crow for today. We're going to get a nice pinch here. I think on Cheppo. Never mind. I lied. No pinch on Cheppo. Instead, we just get kills. I'm going to step on the trap over there on purpose because we want to get rid of traps while they're not you know able to kill us we don't want to step on traps while they're there Tooney with a really nice jump he's going to jump on Cheppo. he's going to be able to get the kill i get a little bit aggressive trying to get that bolt i don't end up or not bolt i always call gems bolt not bolt gem but i you know think twice i move back i realize we're going to get the next spawn and this is a pretty clean tenno to be honest the gene mid was definitely really clean i didn't even have to use a pole you guys didn't see that pole over there um, the bell kind of just missed a good amount of shots and when bell misses shots it's not applying any pressure it's not doing anything it doesn't have any traps because you know we got first mine cards so we didn't have any positioning so it was kind of just an l for them so let's hop into the second game and let's keep things going so i'll be into the next game again we elect to stay with the same comp it's just you know really well rounded tanks don't really counter it range doesn't really counter it Mid-range doesn't really counter it. Heal comps don't counter it. Speed comps don't counter it. It's just a really nice, well-rounded comp. Again, we get first minecart. You know, this isn't something that I only complain about when it goes my way. The fact that a team gets two minecarts in a row, it's toxic. It shouldn't be in the game. It's just an immediate disadvantage for IX in this set. And truthfully, it just shouldn't be a part of the game. I do like the minecart. I do like the idea of dynamic maps. But the fact that IX back-to-back -back games does kind of get screwed over by a minecart is very toxic now here minecart kind of bails us out it traps second i go for a pull now the unfortunate part about that pull is i did get marked in the process so 
now Chepo's just gonna chip us for a little bit more than we're chipping Chepo. Luckily for us, though, we did just sta step, I just said stand, step on two different traps. Um, so that kind of just got traps out of the way, which was really nice because they're in a really aggro position. And if I stepped on any of those, second could have, or not second, sorry, Chepo literally could have just walked up and pulled us. Now that gem is actually in a really good spot. It is directly on top of a trap. So as soon as second tries to pick it up, he's going to step on a trap. That's exactly what goes down. Chepo's forced to move up from his position and, you know, it kind of sucks because I'm marked and I don't have pull, so I have to play this really passive, but my teammates are doing a really good job right now just winning lane, being constant pressure, just being a nuisance. Toonie gets a nice double slow right there. Watch this jump. Two people just disintegrate. That was dirty. That was just toxic. Again, unfortunately, I'm still marked, so I'm really scared to go up and grab these gems. I only grabbed one because I thought OG was going to grab that gem in the mid. He doesn't grab the gem, and now I'm saying, you know, maybe Toonie gets the gem, but we can't get the gem. Now there's a minecart coming, but the spike super was placed perfectly and we got a really bad gem spawn so it was a little bit toxic but things i think start to un you know ravel for ix here miss pull second goes down og picks up the gems again i'm trying not to go for the gems because i'm marked i have all the gems i don't want anything to happen to me uh but this game's going pretty well you know we can't afford a reset but we're in a pretty good spot we get some marks we pull chepo over here again i forgot do i do less damage so og has to hit a shot but that's going to be the second set. It was really clean, and now it is one to one going into the final set. So let's hop into it, and let's show you guys what happened. Now, this set is a really boring to watch at face value set, but if you are a fan of competitive and you want to know how pros think and how everything really does go down in a high-level professional game, this set right here would probably be one of the best ones to watch. So they're going to go with Leon, Bell, and Amber. Very nice, well-rounded comp. Um, it's basically good into everything. We decided to end the Leon defense along with Gene defense is probably the two strongest defenses in the game. Now what we elected to go with was Gene, the Ruffs, and Bell. Now the reason we elected to go with that is because we thought there was a chance they were going to run tanks. If they ran tanks, literally all we would have to do is not fold at the very start. So we can literally just go three defense or something. And then our HP and the treats power-ups aka treats that we have will carry us to victory so right here it's basically a game of patience you know they don't want to push into us and be the first death we don't want to push into them and be the first death Jeppo goes really aggro he's going to go down so this is our chance you know to, to get some utility out of the way so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to take out the super not the super sorry the leon gadget and that's really good now toonie gives us a power up so now we are in our eyes we are winning this game right as we have them backed up, we have them marked, we have two power-ups now, so we are in our eyes winning this game, but we don't want to forfeit position. That would just be awful. You guys can see I walked in the zone. I'm going to replay this because of how significant this is and how little, you know, something can actually be but also be so significant. I wrapped around and I walked into their zone knowing that I was too big and I have my pull, so no one's actually going to do anything to me, and I get 1%. That is all I wanted, was one singular percent. And all we are going to do is we are going to stand here and we are going to try and hold for as long as possible. Now, they are waiting for us to make a mistake. We are waiting for them to make a mistake. That's just how high-level competitive goes. We knew Jack was invisible, but I was spamming that left side. There was a trap on the right and a trap on the mid. So there was nowhere that Chepo could actually go where he could sneak on us and not hit a trap. OG gets second marked. He's doing a really good job. I've had this pull for over a minute probably like a minute and a half now but i'm just saving it i'm not going to use my pull because once i use this pull like 90 percent of the pressure that gene has he loses so og's going to go aggro right here because he thinks he can get a kill it wasn't a bad time to go aggro he just stepped on a trap missed a shot and that's what happens but luckily for us we have dog bag still we have a very treated up gene we have toonie with treats on deck he's got a treat for himself now all we got to do is not fold now since og died same thing for when chepo died we now are a little bit more backed up luckily for us though we decided to run the dog and we have you know power up on power up so we just do more damage i'm still standing here i'm still waiting i'm not going to use my pull unless i know for a 100 percent fact that we are going to hit this pull and we're going to win the game when we hit this pull so again i'm standing i'm not doing anything og gets in the zone for a little bit more pressure 
I saved my pull, kind of a YOLO pull at the end, but doesn't really matter. And we're gonna win that first game. The 1% was all that we needed. We defended perfectly, didn't overextend, didn't do anything. And that is going to be the first game and bring us to match point one nothing for us. So going into the second game here, we're gonna stick with the same comp. We like the comp. They're gonna stick with the, or not stick with it, sorry. They're gonna go a different comp and they're actually gonna go aggressive bell here. Now, there was a lot this game there were very few mistakes, let me just say, in this set from both teams together. There were very few mistakes that happened. One of the mistakes that we made, particularly in this game, was using dog bags too fast. Now, when we make a mistake, it's not necessarily a certain player. So, for example, the player playing was Toonie. It's not like he necessarily made a mistake. It's that we, when we play comps and when you play competitive games, you learn things as you play. And one thing that we learned was that we used our bags way too early in this game. So we should have saved our bags. It's not something that anyone uh, voiced. It's not something that anyone really was too aware of. But we used our bags really early because we had Gene and Bell on our lane. Um, and this, you know, bags counter that. So you think, you know, why not just use the bags? Um, but it didn't end up working too well because now what's going to happen is Charles is going to get pull and we can't really move up that well. Now they can't move up into me. I hit the pull over there on second. It was a good pull. But unfortunately, that gave them 1%. So looking back on things, I didn't even realize that. I gave them 1%. I probably shouldn't have done that. Pretty bad decision on my end. So that's something I didn't even realize happened until I just watched it back right now. But I just gave them 1%, which isn't good. Which even though it's just 1%, based on how you guys, like just, you know, you guys watch the full game, uh, the full last game, 1% is all you need. So they did get another 1% because Toonie did go down and I used my pull. So I don't think I could have killed... Or no, Tuni didn't go down, sorry. Tuni was low, and I used my pull, so Charles was able to walk up and get some damage. OG's kind of stuck on this lane right here, because he can't really walk up, can't really go back. There's not much, to be honest, that he can do. Charles, or not Charles, sorry. Cheppo was really low. We almost had the kill over there on Cheppo, but we weren't able to get it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, just for the sake of insight, we lost this game. But there is not much we can do. I have pull, so you can be like, you know, go make a pull. But the issue is Charles also has a pull. Now, watching back this game, something I should have done is just... There was a certain time where I think I could have manually aimed max range pull, which was right here. I think if I walked up right here and just yolo to pull, I could have hit one on Charles or second. But I didn't. I saved my pull because if I miss my pull, we automatically lose the game. But I should have realized we were in a bad spot already, so I should have just, you know, full sent it and just let it happen but now we're trying to move up we're trying to make a play right here og steps on a trap he gets pulled it's two percent so it's still winnable we still have a chance you know chepo's marked it's not like it's not possible to win this game but it's just not in our favor right now it's really hard i get marked tuni goes down and although chepo's still marked and og's trying to make plays it's just not possible for us to you know move into their zone and they're gonna win this game we won the first game by a little bit more than 1%, but we basically won by 1%. They win game two by 2%. So let's move into game three. Maybe you guys can find the pattern in this and let's see what happens in game three. So game three comes around. They're gonna stick with the same comp and we're gonna stick with the same comp. You guys might be like, you know, why stick with the same comp? Didn't work out last game. They're probably gonna stay the same, but we're just gonna change up our strategy a little bit. Instead of playing defensive at the start, I decided to play really aggressive. Same with Toonie, we're not even getting our zone. We can, we can worry about that later. Um, we're just trying to go up and the reason why Ruffs and Gene work so well together is I'm healing Toonie and Toonie is giving me HP. So we are constantly just feeding off of each other. There's stuff always happening and it's really, really good actually. The combination of Ruffs and Gene. And then another thing in this game that we were trying to focus on a little bit more is not using our bags early. That's something we wanted to stay away from. So we're getting really aggressive here. We're trying to get some treats. We're trying to get some positioning. We're trying to not get pushed back. Obviously not give them 0%. Chepo's gonna walk up and use a flame. I almost pull him into the zone there, which I just realized, um, but I don't pull him into the zone. I pull him in front of the zone. Um, and then OG gets like 3% up there. And then Toonie takes a treat for himself. I know you're watching this Toonie. Not supposed to do that, but he did it anyways. I, he did it by accident, but uh, he took the treat for himself, which is kind of unfortunate um, because the dog with treat obviously isn't as good as the, you know, Gene or Bell. Bell interactions change if the Bell has the treat and then the constant spray from Gene and just the, the higher amount of damage that you do from those little sprays is 
is quite a lot. It's pretty annoying, but they get some really good position here. Second tries to get some percentage. He's not able to. There's the treat waiting for me. OG hits a shot, which allows me to move up and pick it up because they had really good position. And now I'm just trying to pull Chepo or Charles. I'm not trying to stay stagnant like we have been the last few games. I want to hit a pull. I want to try and make a play and move up and get us a little bit more of a lead. And that is, you know, kind of the goal for the next little bit. Charles gets marked. That was a really good mark by OG. Chepo's kind of just throwing oil onto oil. I don't really understand why. I'm not in Amber main, so I'm not going to roast anyone's Amber. And in fact, Chepo's actually a really good Amber. But, like, I just don't know. Like, I don't understand the point of that. Um, but I probably just don't understand something about Amber. Anyways, Toonie picks up the treat for himself because OG goes down. Second tries to get into the zone. Tries to get, as, you know, as much percentage as he can, but he's not able to do so. Um, Charles is pulled, so we're trying to stay aware of that. Charles is going to miss his pull over there. He went for a nice max ranger. I don't think it would have mattered if he hit me anyways, because I would have been able to kill at least one of them, given my HP and given that second was low and Charles was marked. Honestly, I could have killed both of them. I kind of wish I got pulled. But OG had a kill on his lane anyway, so it didn't really matter. OG's doing a really good job on this side. He gets the kill. We're just going to push them back over there. I'm going to hit my last pull over there on Chepo, and that is going to be game. You guys can now watch Toonie spin very aggressively for 10 seconds. I don't know if he doesn't like IX or something. I know he's pretty cool with them, but Toonie likes to spin. But anyways, that is going to be it for the video. I went to double match point, but we were able to take the W. If you guys enjoyed... Oh, by the way, the pattern was we were going to win by 3%. You get it? Because game one, we would have won by one. Game two, we lost by two. And then game three, we could have won by three, but we went into the zone for fun. But anyways, it's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a, leave a thumbs up. You know, do all that, whatever. I'm going to be back trying to get as many videos as, out as possible. The, all, again, the reason I have it is just because it's competitive. And it's a really, you know, big time. And I really want to make it. But, uh, but yeah, that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys enjoyed, thumbs up, all that stuff. I will see you guys as soon as possible. See you guys then.